I felt like I needed to open with this meme I've seen on the internet. Uh, it's, 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 I love Florence, but it's just too apt. Um, be that as it may. I am so thrilled to be sitting here to talk about a new Florence song. I was thinking as we got into the new year that I was like, 2022, it's time for a new Florence record. For four years since High is Hope in 2018, and it's time for, you know, a revival for her. And I think that this album is going to be a lot longer, which sort of satisfies us after Highest Hope was such a shorter project. Uh, so we're looking at 15 songs, potentially. Florence started teasing with these sort of tarot cards. Uh, they're really beautifully, you know, photographed and then illustrated around with the borders. And it's got me thinking, and it's got a lot of fans speculating that Florence is going to be sort of creating a tarot card, so to speak, for every single song on this record. And the first song we are getting is called King. It was just released this week, and it is the most... Florence song ever. Uh, and I don't know how best to describe it other than that. Um, this is a song that is definitely, um, it feels like it's within Florence's comfort zone. Like everything about it, it's like, I see Florence doing this, like the vocal wails, the instrumentation being very rhythmically uh, drum based. Um, the actual lack of other instrumentals until the end, I think is a really great way to sort of spotlight her vocal and the emotion and the sort of pent up frustration that this song is relying upon. The verses and the lyrics are just so center stage on this, which I really appreciate. I forget that Florence is just such a wordsmith that she creates such epic poems as songs. And I really forget that sometimes when I get so wrapped up in the melodies of her music. And so this song is definitely letting the lyrics take a little bit more center stage. And then the chorus is just this very powerful sort of incantation of, I am no mother, I am no bride, I am king. Florence talks about how in the wake of this song coming out, she's made some statements about how her gender, her being a woman, has started to come at odds a little bit with her idea of herself as a performer, as a musician. She's always modeled herself after male performers who continually put out art and the idea of having a family, possibly raising children, doesn't necessarily have to necessarily put a stop to any of that. There's not the same level of pressure and expectation, and also not the same quite level of caretaking that goes in sometimes for her male counterparts in family raising. And Florence, who is now 35 years old, turning 36 this year, is sort of contemplating, hmm, I'm going into my late 30s and I kind of would like to start a family. How is this going to impact my career? I can't just you know, do it as this sort of, it, it's not something that some for some of my male counterparts can just be so easily either brushed aside or sort of done at the same time in tandem with. It could be very disruptive to her being able to do all the things she loves to do, like touring and all of the stuff, all of it, um, and being sort of this renegade, free bohemian spirit, I suppose. That's kind of where she's at here with that. And that's touched on in the verses of this song. We are in the kitchen about arguing about whether to have children and the world ending and the scale of my ambition and how much is art really worth? The very thing you're best at is the thing that hurts the most. But you need your rotten heart, your dazzling pain like diamond rings. You need to go to war to find material to sing. I am no mother, I am no bride, I am king. In the chorus, I need my golden crown of sorrow, my bloody sword to sing, my empty halls to echo with grand self mythology. I love that last line. Um, I need all of this space for my mind to expand and become so enwrapped in its own kind of fantasy about who I am and be able to explore all of my different avenues of identity in that way. And sorry, I might steamroll you in the process. And, you know, I also need to be able to uh, wear a golden crown that kind of is a little tarnished with, you know, potentially some bloodshed. Um, obviously metaphorical, not literal. Um, we know that like when she sings about having an ax that she needs to swing, which is something that Florence alludes to a lot in sort of this kind of pent up kind of, I'm done taking your BS kind of energy that's on a lot of her songs. Uh, it definitely gives that, that feminist undertone a real kick. And I think that this song is a great, you know, way of her sort of reclaiming her power in yet a still feminine kind of context but also saying like in the belting of this chorus that like I'm to be taken seriously as an artist and of course as an equal partner. 
Um, so breaking down gender identity is a huge, you know, is a huge thing here. And I think that that's something that's really important. If we're going to, you know, dismantle the patriarchy, we need to understand that gender roles are arbitrary and, you know, she can still be a mother. She can still be a bride, but that is not what defines her. She can also be king. Um, and in this instance, that's what she's channeling and feeling. And the way that the music video portrays this in somewhat of a violent context of parts with the man getting his head, you know, uh, his neck snapped, um, his neck, neck, neck snapped and Florence kind of just <laughs> kind of summoning her, summoning him like a, you know, like a high uh, witch priestess and this, you know, coven of um, bloodthirsty you know, uh, women is, is, is an, an allegory for how you kind of maybe self-destructive in her relationships. Maybe she all is all consuming. I mean, that last shot where she bends down and is just kind of like inhaling him. It's got this kind of ominous kind of feeling of that. Uh, it's sort of a, it's sort of a nod to how like, it's like, I want to consume, I'm going to, you know, run rampant, uh, through you and you better be prepared. Um, I have an untamed side. I have a very sort of controlling side. Now, that's not to say that I think that Florence has, you know, problematic tendencies for being a super, you know, abusive person. It's just when you become sort of stereotyped as this like feeble, she has like a very soft voice, like gentle, like long flowing fabric kind of woman. It's like, you know, I want to subvert the script a little bit. I am powerful. I have some, you know, powerful emotions inside of me. And you can't like stomp all over me because I might appear to be very soft and delicate, you know, at first sight. So I think that's where she's coming from with all of this. And she's also just, she's just exploring her own identity. Like I said, it's coming in her mid to late thirties when she's realizing I kind of want to be a mother, but I also really don't. And I'm feeling pressure by society. I'm feeling that biological clock, unfortunately, and men don't have to worry about this so much. And it's really on my mind. And so I think that this is just a cathartic way of expressing that. And I think it is a brilliant teaser for what's to come on this project. Sonically, I think we are definitely going back to more of that, you know, medieval glam, slightly slightly rock, but mostly sort of alternative, uh, crashing, wailing chorus, uh, ceremonials, lungs type music. Um, I definitely, I mean, I see influence on from How Big, How Blue as well. Um, the visuals are reminding me of so much of so many of the amazing visuals from that record. Um, honestly, I have to be honest with you, I'm a Florence fan, but the Highest Hope era was pretty dull. Um, it was pretty stripped back and there weren't that many music videos and it was also only 10 songs and a lot of the songs felt a little you know okay like a little tribute bandy to me in my opinion I, I love the record for what it is but it left me wanting so much more from her and so at this point like a part of me is kind of like we're still waiting for like the follow-up to how big how blue like I'm like I, there's just not really been a satisfying you know successor yet um, and of course, Ceremonials and Lungs, which are just such phenomenal records that I have reviewed all on this channel. And I will link in the description if you are interested and you are new here. Um, but I'm definitely getting a sense that, especially if this is going to be a 15 song project, that, you know, we're going to get a little bit more of an expansive record. I'm also really liking, I'm just happy that she's going back to a little bit more of the over the top costuming, the sort of medieval pagan witchy kind of Renaissance glam vibes. Uh, you know, it's, it's not that I always want her to see, I, I like the stripped back aesthetic. She does that really well in parts of the how big, how blue era, but there, at least the music was like really stirring something up. I feel like the music in the highest hope era was, let's just put it this way. It was her Joanne era, you know, for the Lady Gaga reference. And we all love Joanne. She needed to do it, but it's like, we want something a little more pageantry. We want something with a little bit more conceptual you know, fully realized like art statements. Um, and so I think we're getting a little bit more in that territory again. So I'm just really excited for this new project. We don't know when it's coming out, but my prediction is that it's probably going to come out around when How Big How Blue did, probably sometime in like early May, late April, as late as June. I would be surprised if it came out later than June of this year. Um, who knows, definitely by the summer, but I'm very excited to see more of Florence. Um, one other thing, of course, I do want to comment is that Jack Antonoff is the producer on this one. I'm not entirely sure if this is the first time that Florence and Jack have worked together. 
But, you know, Jack, I'm a little bit like, okay, this is going to be hit or miss because he's done some great things with some of my favorite artists and some of my other artists I like. It's sort of like, could you work with someone else? <laughs> Jack is a little, he's he's a little bit stuck in his, um, t you know, specific, you know, style of production. So I'm not sure if Jack is really any a bit of an issue here. Um, the Like I said, there's a bit of a subdued nature to the verses. Um, sometimes I'm like, I feel like the volume needs to go up a little bit, but her vocals are sort of meant to be like understated before they belt out. And especially in that bridge, when she explodes like a volcano, you know that that was what it was all building up for. Um, and she also is really leaning into this sort of sultry kind of, uh, uh, sounds kind of strange to me saying it, but you know, I'm no mother, I'm no bride. Like it's very like in the back of her throat and it's very vocal fry. And, and I mean, it's it's a really fun sort of thing she's experimenting with more in her music. Um, there's definitely a little bit of that <laughs> growling film um, in the Big God music video. She really lets loose with that. One of the more interesting things in the Highest Hope era. And it seems that she is going to be playing a lot more with that in this project. So I'm definitely here for slightly demonic growling Florence. Um, what can I say? So let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on this new song? And, uh, if you're excited for this new era, cause I am sure it has hell I am. And I will see you all in my, hopefully not too far in the distant future, Florence and the Machine fifth studio album review. Hope you all have a wonderful blessed day. Peace, love, and light. Bye.